And boom, we are live. What up, ladies and gentlemen? My name is Roman Singna Hall, and this is the best of Evergreen San Jose show. Awesome, we're here with Mr. Crosby, Evergreen School District. You here? How are you doing, sir? Good, sir. How are you doing today? Awesome. It's a beautiful awesome. day out there. It is. I wish you guys could see this view. Uh, 1560 Allen Rock Avenue. Check that out. Cheers. Good this, morning. Uh, meetings where the topic of homework comes up and it'll get really heated. We'll have mm -hmm. different parents with very different perspectives. Some rhetoric go, go going on in 84 San Jose Mercury News and you took it as a positive point instead of looking at it in a negative way to say, oh, by the way, I'm an openly uh, a gay man, right? And I'm a decision maker uh, and so forth and, and get, put yourself out there. And I feel that that takes uh, a level of confidence, self-awareness, especially for a politician because people are so constantly worried. Obviously, you know, Ken, I got a filter. I don't care what anyone thinks, right? I'm going to be open. I'm going to be honest uh, in a polite, respectful uh, way. Um, uh, first off, I commend you for that. Number two, that took some courage um, at the time, right? That might be in the background with these guys going, don't do that, Ken, that's a PR nightmare, right? But I think in the end, being honest, being authentic, being transparent, people respect that. People uh, love that. Um, what, what was going through your, your mind then? Well, well, first off, we shouldn't give any attention to whatever rhetoric uh, was going on, but obviously this was a response to, if you, if you could just uh, elaborate a little uh, on that. Yeah, it. Um, if someone had had written an article in the in the Mercury News, basically saying that uh, that 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 gay people uh, were so contemptible that they shouldn't have any rights whatsoever. This was this was before uh, laws saying that you couldn't discriminate based on sexual orientation uh, had been passed, and that basically the, uh, our society didn't even need or want gay people because again they were so mm. despicable. Right. And at that point, I wasn't um, I wasn't out to everybody, and mm. certainly very involved in politics. Mm. But 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 I realized as I was reading that paper uh, that Sunday morning that if I didn't stand up for myself, nobody else would. Right. And it's been been a, a, a obviously a philosophy I've carried with me uh, uh, all my life. That I guess even what, even, I even guess what there was hundreds of others you were speaking for. Yeah, right? and that even though it might hurt me uh, politically, right. uh, professionally, economic, I and mean, any number of ways, that the most basic thing is your own, your, you. own your, oh, your own rights and, 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 and you being a fighter mm. for what you know is right and oh. being able to accept the consequences of when you do that. And it really then allowed me to, um, to get more active in the gay community and, right. and uh, create a, a, a gay political organization that is still um, around today. One more time, that's the one, one I missed. The original name was. It's still called. Uh, it's called Baymac Bay Area Municipal Elections Committee, mm -hmm. and uh, we formed I'm, it in eighty four. Mr. Eager incorporated uh, a certain policies to include gender uh, when it came to harassment. Uh, was it in the work workplace? Uh, or ordinances, but to make sure that uh, gender is included or considered. Um, it had to do with harassment. I can't remember if it's workplace. It's obviously probably in workplace. Uh, Ken has done so much and so many things. He's trying to track it. Did I do that? Uh, but yes, <laughs> you did, sir. Yeah. But I'll tell you one thing. Sure. Uh, Twenty-five years ago, when I started in uh, uh, in uh, social services, it was really interesting because I was hired to do a massive campaign to bring awareness regarding foster care and adoptions, and we struggled. Uh, to uh, bring this kind of awareness. I'm so glad that 25 years later, we're talking about it, we're looking uh, not only just to talk about it, but there are uh, systems in place, and, uh, and there's so much uh, advocacy and support for these young people that really have become really vulnerable uh, individuals in our community. Uh, we know that they have an increased risk of uh, homelessness, right. an increased risk of unemployment, an increased risk of dropping out of school, an increased risk of uh, so many other issues uh, as they grow older and they age out of foster care. Exactly. So uh, th there's no easy answer to it. I think it's a really intriguing question. Uh, I watched that film that you mentioned with my son. Who, yes. 
Um, and he's he's very passionate about this. He's a middle schooler, and he of course, uh, if you're their age, uh, you're like, what? No homework? Well, well it, I'm all in. I well, like this but, guy. But interestingly, it's not, like, there's a, there's he, a science he, to it. He's a kid who um, he says I would rather do extra time at school mm. and get it done in class, like make the classes longer and make it about interactive classwork, mm. uh, and not work at home. Mm. And there, that's hands on the, learning. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I absolutely agree. And kind philosophically, of like it's an interesting way to go for a 14-year-old kid. No, I, uh, I've read. I'll put up this pyramid that, you know, uh, studies have proven that reading was actually one of the worst ways to comprehend information. Yeah. Then it was uh, writing. I want to say Palo. I, I, don't, I don't want to be wrong. But basically, the top of the charts, um, aside from hands-on, yeah. was simulation. Yeah. Actually, you can say video games. But, for example, a pilot, when he's not flying a plane, he's has a pilot simulator yeah. Yeah. so that's been proven to be the quickest way uh video is uh, you know above pictures uh and so forth yes, right. the reading was the wrong way and i guess the fear is it makes parents feel good because maybe they want more daycare away from their jobs <laughs> of more because I, I i think about both sides all the time yeah. so one of the other answers was to decrease time at school and increase recess well realistically in this world you decrease time at school that means the parents have to come and pick them up quicker which to them sure. they're like yeah. In the back of their mind, they're gonna. So, uh, so I get my uh, my my PhD from Stanford. Yes, and, yes. Uh, and so Education. then, so very very lucky to then um, get hired at San Jose State mm. uh, in the political science department. Yep, yep. And, and you so, still periodically teach, by the way, but you yep. did that for twelve years. That's which, right. That's right. So I did my so, homework. So you did. So uh, <laughs> we're gonna. At this point, you're at an A minus. So we'll see if we get, we'll get you to an A because you're always going to be that well, yeah. You're protected because let's say I'm an evil landlord and I just try to sort of double, triple your rent overnight. That's not going to uh, be possible in this development like this. Well, okay. Well, this is affordable housing, so okay. this is entirely different. Okay. So affordable housing is is uh, is, uh, 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 is so affordable housing is entirely a, a different type of development. Mm. So this is for individuals. Whose income is extremely low per standards. So there's there's a, a metrics uh, uh, put out by the state of California. Uh, so you have to meet that uh, that matrix. So it may be a family of five or six, and maybe your income can't be uh, above sixty thousand dollars. And your your uh, rent, and I'm, it's just off the top of my head. Please don't quote me. Right. But maybe your rent is going to be about nine hundred dollars. Got it. Got and so, so, so that, so that. So that gives so, you right away. So in order for you to have the incentive. So if you there, make too much, you cannot live there, you right? Can't in live a, there. In a certain you way. Can't live there. Now, what you're talking about in terms of the renter rights protection are policies and ordinances that the city council mm -hmm. passed just a few months ago. Uh, uh, standardized tests. They still exist right now in yeah. the system. Yeah, the, your thoughts on them? what's interesting about testing is again you go back to debates. There's there's huge debates over the weight that school districts put on on testing. So phase two is going to be a dog park. So we're excited. This is uh, our thirty first. I know Neto Bejerano, a dog park, <laughs> a dog park. Yeah. So anyway, so that's going to be phase two. But anyway, phase one right now is beautiful. And so um, it's all around, and 31st week, we're going to have a little ribbon cutting uh, with little cupcakes or something. I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out. But that's more to come. So that was we'll throw the date in there, too. You helped uh, uh, with that as well. Um, so fast forward, you the first rainbow flag, and, and I, I love diversity. I think that's awesome. It is flown at uh, San Jose City Hall. Oh, yeah. And I saw it when walking in today. That's right. that it's on there. Snapchat. It's there. And through a pointer, I said, by the way, the gentleman I'm about to meet is one of the reasons that uh, that that is is there, meaning right outside of West uh, Heading Street. So, San Jose City Council. When did we had that first flag? So I was uh, um, I, I took office uh, January one, two thousand and one, mm -hmm. and that June, which is Gay Pride Month, mm -hmm. was the very first time that we raised the rainbow flag. Uh, at City Hall, and that actual flag is uh, outside my office, mm -hmm. right here, um, framed. Um, that's awesome. That's what I saw. That, that's what you, certainly that I always try to, to share with folks is, it matters uh, on one level, but it's not the only thing that matters. Sure. And so there's there's always going to be some degree of standardized testing. And the question is, do you educate to the test, mm. or do you educate? Um, to make sure your kids are best prepared for the world that awaits them. Well said. And the testing is part of that, but it's it, the, te the testing doesn't matter at all unless you also look at uh, other ways that the kids are learning. Yes. Uh, I think of some of our schools that take a less traditional approach toward education that rely less on those standardized testing and more on, say, project-based learning. 
Okay. Uh, and so it's a mix, and that's yeah. what's important. Omar, Omar Torres. Uh, Omar Torres. He put it all together, uh, so thank he, him, by the way. He, 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 Talk about, uh, and just to, to, to wrap up, I, I want to grab this as well, but uh, you published, um, what, was, it, was it a book exactly? Yeah. So this is Trailblazers. Yes, right. Um, and can, can people find that anywhere? Where, where can we find that? It's uh, out of print, uh, okay. but you can always... That's a good sign. And so I thought it was a um, pretty unique sort of group of people mm -hmm. and just wanted to know how they did it. Yeah, that's so, what better way? Yeah, uh, find out who the best yeah. is, surround yeah. yourself by, and learn with them. Germany had some stuff going on. I don't know why it popped into my head. Was Germany just passing legislation? To, to well, to allow um, gay marriage. Okay, so they're just at that just point. Just now. Just now. Interesting.